Ten years ago today, Nigeria's Islamic terrorist group Boko Haram broke into a school in Shibuk and ran off with 276 schoolgirls. This mass kidnapping sparked a global campaign for their release, drawing support from prominent U.S. figures like Michelle Obama and Hillary Clinton. And some of the girls escaped, but more were released in 2016 and 2017 after negotiations between the Nigerian government and the terrorist group. Nearly 100 of them, though, are still missing. So joining us now here in Studio 57 is my former CNN colleague, Aisha Sasei. She was an anchor and correspondent at CNN, but now she's an author and the CEO of Area Media. Aisha's reporting on this story was the driving force behind the global Bring Back Our Girls movement. Aisha, welcome. Welcome Thank to CBS. You. So good to see me. you. So you were uh, one of the only journalists on the ground to accompany 21 of the girls back in 2016. Just take us back. You wrote a book about this. Take us back to that moment for you because... You and I were covering from the very moment that mm. the girls were kidnapped, but for you to be there when some of them were coming home, many of us were not able to do that. Describe that for us. It was incredibly emotional for them. It, they were going home for the first time after two years in captivity. Um, it was a very difficult journey because there were security concerns that with Boko Haram being aware that there was a group of girls going back, there could be another attack. So it was highly stressful, highly coordinated. And for me, on a personal level, my mother was in a coma in hospital in Nigeria at the time. So there was a real struggle for me on the personal side. But I felt this was something I had to do. I had to take them back. Um, and I do want to say we took 21 of them back and they were the first group of girls to be released as part of government negotiations. But when we arrived in Chibok, the shocking thing is the parents of the missing 200 plus girls hadn't been told that all the girls weren't mm. coming back. Mm. And so I will never forget ever arriving and parents streaming into the building and realizing their children weren't back, mm -hmm. that there was only the small number and the shrieks and the crying and the, dis the despair will stay with me forever. Mm. Um, what condition were they in? What were they like? They were so thin. I remember thinking that because I had met them previously in almost just days after their release in October of 2016. And then I took them home, I accompanied them home in December. And in that, that time, they were just so emaciated. Mm. Their bones were jutting out. They were so ashen, mm. ashen and and so quiet and subdued. And you could see that the trauma was still very much with them. So then I think many people will be surprised to know that there some, at least 100 of these girls are still missing. And when you describe the condition of the girls that you sort of brought home or you welcomed home, I can't imagine what the conditions of the girls that are still missing might be. Yes, uh, almost 100 girls, women now, let's mm -hmm. be clear, mm -hmm. 10 years have passed and they were taken at various ages from 16 to 19 and then maybe a little older. And so they're women now who are in captivity. And I, I think the thing that I think about most is that by and large, most of them, if not all of them, have been married off. Um, now, so a lot of them have kids in captivity and a lot of them are living in the forest of Sambisa in northeastern Nigeria. And it's these are very difficult conditions. Um, but I also want to say, sadly, I'm in touch with a number of the girls who are in captivity and have formed relationships with them over the years. And one of them sent me a long list of just breaking down who's in school, who has dropped out of school, who's still in captivity with all the names. Mm. And according to her count, Again, unverified, just single source. She says about 18 of that nearly 100 have died. Mm, wow. So heartbreaking. So it's, it's, again, and parents don't, don't know, but this, this particular girl who was held for, for two years listed names and everything. Mm. And so by her count, again, single source, just one person, by her count, there are 78 girls who are still alive and in captivity and, and married off, which makes getting them back so much harder because mm. you're not... You're not negotiating for a group of girls. No. You have to go girl by girl, woman by woman, who's now in a different home to see if a deal can be made. And they're not going to leave their children. So, yeah. Uh, so, on one hand, there's a bright spot for you uh, that you're going to be attending one of the college graduations, I should say, for, yes. for the young woman yeah. um, who uh, is graduating, uh, which is an enormous accomplishment. And as a journalist, someone who's... For, for you to be able to follow the story from trauma to triumph, has got to be something. Yeah. Um, on the other, Aisha, uh, 
I recall back when this first happened in April of 2014 that we were shocked, and I think a lot of people were shocked that something like this could happen in a country like Nigeria, yeah. the, 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 the giant of Africa, one of the largest militaries on the continent, uh, the economic powerhouse. But that now we're still in 2024 hearing about more girls Absolutely, being kidnapped. absolutely. I mean, just about four weeks ago, we saw 280 or so children taken from Kaduna State in the Northwest, and many of them, we're told, have been returned. I think something that you and I have talked about a lot and in covering this story out, and you were in Nigeria based there for some time, is just how hard it is to get information yep. out and how everything is shrouded in this, this fog. Mm -hmm. And some of it is intentional. Some of this, in the case of this story, it, the remoteness of the story, the, the communities that you're dealing with are highly insular and quiet and just afraid to speak mm -hmm. up. Um, and so now we see kidnapping has become a business. And in the case of these, these young women now, this was Boko Haram, but now it's, you know, it's become a cottage industry and groups are going around kidnapping students and, and, and everyday folk for ransom. Uh, as we wrap this up, I should point out that, uh, to Aisha's point about how it, difficult it is to get information out, it's also difficult to get people outside of Africa to care about yes. these stories. Yeah. And uh, I recall that when the story first broke, it, um, we were getting traction on the continent and perhaps in Europe, but when Aisha made the decision along with our bosses at CNN to start to anchor her broadcast from Nigeria, mm. that is when you saw Prime Minister David Cameron mm -hmm. and Michelle Obama uh, holding up signs saying, hashtag bring back our girls. Yeah. And then that story became a worldwide phenomena. And by that point, the Nigerian government had tried to lock down the yes. country to prevent other journalists yes. from coming in, right. but we were already there. And right. so that's how that story and became And made to feel it. very unwelcome. That's we right. Bet. <laughs> There's I a bet. whole story behind that too. Yeah. Uh, Aisha, it's so good to see Thank you. you. Yeah. Uh, Thank Congratulations on the book and congratulations you. on your new media company as well. Thank you.